Hello everyone. I am Sudhakar. In this video, we will be sharing the experience of Mr. Gaurang Jaju, who has been placed as an R&D engineer in Sedimac. Before we listen to Gaurang, I would like to introduce him formally to our viewers. Gaurang is a final year MTech student in the Department of Energy Science and Engineering at IIT Bombay. For his MTech project, he is working on the state estimation for battery management system of electric vehicles. Apart from academics, Gaurang has also worked as a company coordinator for the institute placement team at IIT Bombay. He completed his B.Tech in Electrical Engineering from Rajasthan Technical University, Kota in 2018. Without further delay, I would request Gaurang to share his experience of getting placed in sediment. Thank you, Gaurang. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, I said that. Yes, Gaurang. So, Gaurang, could you please tell, a, tell us a bit about the company, Sedimac, and the profile of R&D engineer that you have been offered? Okay. So, uh, Sedimac is a mechatronics company. Uh, it works uh, uh, mainly in uh, drive train controls. So, the uh, IC engine vehicles, or it is also going in electrical vehicles these days. So, these kind of control uh, equipments they make like battery management system or sensorless control, power controllers. So these are the kind of things they work on. Uh, R&D engineer uh, in that uh, they have uh, uh, told about uh, means what was specified in the JAF that they have entered. The, that was said that uh, a candidate would require to be work on these kind of technologies that I uh, mentioned. It was like uh, particularly, some things were mentioned about uh, lithium ion battery cells and uh, electric vehicles, motor controllers, and generator controllers. So, the, that is the kind of idea I had about the company. Okay, yes, Bar. Yeah, once you join the company, then you will get to know, uh, you know, Bar in detail about the profile. So, Gaurav, we will uh, we can talk a bit about your transition. Like as we can see that you have done your B.Tech in electrical engineering, and uh, from our previous speakers, I I now know that in energy science uh, in your department, people are there from electrical engineering and mechanical engineering both. I think mm -hmm. I am correct, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So in your case, you did your B.Tech in electrical engineering, and then now you are you are pursuing your M.Tech in energy science. So yes. let's talk about uh, your transition. Like, how did this happen from electrical engineering to energy science? Okay. So uh, uh, after my graduation, what I had idea of energy uh, is means the sustainable future and the renewable energy that we are coming up. We came to know across the drawbacks of fossil fuel energy that we have. So I was a bit into that and uh, that is what uh, my idea of energy engineering was. But uh, when you comment here, uh, it is, uh, so electrical engineering and uh, energy engineering are uh, those separate uh, you know, things. It is energy systems engineering. So uh, generally in electrical engineering, we look at things from uh, like on an equipment basis, like focusing on motor or generator or a power electronic say power electronics device and in energy systems engineer we look at uh, the whole system level at a large so uh, things like power plants or those things are also uh, there in electrical engineering so it is kind of you know cross disciplinary things yes. so uh, not uh, that different to transit actually so mm, yeah that is what my understanding of about the transition is yes, yes. yeah I, I think this will also help for the upcoming students those who are planning to pursue masters in energy science so they can also uh, get to know about the various uh, you know domains in which your department is working and mainly that depart about the department as well so they can get to know these things yes yes so uh, like uh, along with the so uh, in our projects uh, will try to integrate different things so, so we also need some idea of mechanical engineering or uh, say i'm back uh, working on batteries so uh, some thing of chemical engineering so you can learn it along the way it's not uh, that difficult to catch up on something yeah definitely yes Gaurav. So, Gaurav, now we can talk a bit about your placement experience. So, uh, do you remember, like, after signing the JAFs, what were the steps that actually happened? Miss resume, shortlisting, test, what were these things? 
for the sedimac yes so sedimac we had uh, i don't think resume shortlisting was there we had a test and the test was kind of unique generally companies take uh, uh, this aptitude test or technical test this test was kind of unique they had a uh, uh, what i could say like basic physics kind of question mixed with aptitude you could say and not uh, specifically in any one domain like electrical domain or mechanical domains so they were just yeah i could you could say the the questions uh, that we kind of used to have in je okay the, yeah so those kind of uh, questions so everyone was after that test uh, what was this test because we weren't used to that so that was a good test i would say good test to check knowledge of you know basic uh, engineering knowledge of uh, candidates yes yeah so uh, that test was there then uh, they didn't shortlist it much people even i guess so 50 people uh, 25 people were shortlisted for and, this yeah and 50 were in wait list and uh, i was also in wait list okay yeah so uh, later i was uh, promoted to the shortlist from that day of interviews okay garan so uh, so before that uh, do you remember the, the departments for which that jap was open uh departments that would be uh, i think aerospace was there uh electrical energy mechanical will also be there uh systems and control would be there okay mm-hmm. yeah i think those are the relevant departments yes. i might be missing few but uh, yeah, yeah yeah that's yeah. not an issue and i guess the jaf was open for uh, btech dual degree mtech all of the students the jaf was yes, yes, yes. it was open for and the segment had offered only one jaf or there were more than one jaf uh there were two jaf okay uh, and uh, it wasn't open for energy engineering i guess uh, it was also for btech mtech and dd so it was not uh, graduation or uh, you know uh, generally we have here that were not open for pgs thing it was uh, i think they decided according to the domain the first uh, the other jaf was i think hardware engineer so okay. electronics uh, was more involved so i don't think it would have been uh, anyway good fit for energy students so Yes. Yeah. So, so there were two jobs. One was yeah. engineer, and then another was R and D engineer. And you have been selected as an R and D engineer. Yeah. Yes. So now we can talk. Uh, you know, but discuss the test in detail. And as you have mentioned that there was no resume shortlisting, so we can assume that all the students who signed the job, they were allowed to appear for the test. Yes. Yes, and you mentioned that the test was unique, definitely, and uh, there were questions like somewhat J level, the one we which we used to study back then. So, um, like, uh, okay, so in that case, there were only technical questions. There was no coding question or or the aptitude questions. No, no, there were no like uh, you can't put it like the usual aptitude questions we have, speed or time or something or. Uh, entirely technical question that we have with the circuits or those there were none of those not a single okay. question was like that okay so only technical questions were there no uh well you could say the uh, questions were more on like uh, mechanics side of things like you know, spring and box or a wheel is ro- rolling and uh, something about the what was that oh, strain and stress kind of things yes. that's what i remember that's been time so i don't remember that so yeah. that is the kind of questions that were there in test okay okay or, or any coding question any coding what? question programming language no, questions no programming questions uh, just these kind of question you could do these you know uh, like uh, if you have you know calm mind and uh, Just yes. not panic that what has come, what is this? If you just focus on a problem like a yes. uh, kind of first principles questions. Okay, 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 okay. So just applying the basic, basic things that we know, gravity or mm-hmm. spring force or that kind of things. Uh, that will they could be solved. Okay, okay, yeah, yes, yes. So and and what was the time allotted for this test? Time slot. Uh, time is how much time duration was? Duration. Yeah. Duration. I think it would have been one hour. 
Okay. And how many questions were there? Total, do you remember the rough, the approximate number of questions? 2025, 20, I guess. 2025. 20, okay, okay. And all of them were MCQ questions, or you have or yes, maybe some verified type. Okay, okay, MCQ questions. So you have to solve them, and there were uh, n number of miss options given. You have to choose one of them. Mm -hmm. So, Gorang, uh, uh, means as you have mentioned that those questions were similar to what we used to practice in JE time back then. So, yes. uh, so like, how did you plan or how did you prepare for this particular test? Uh, given that it has been so long since we appeared for our JE, so how did you revise or brush up those concepts? Or already you were or you yeah? So, how did you prepare for this? <laughs> well, actually, we didn't know that this was going to come. Okay. So we had no idea what was going to come. It was, uh, and this test was also, I think, one of the, you know, uh, when the test uh, things began for the placement season. So it was one of the um, first test we gave. Okay. So we didn't knew what to expect. We, okay. It was just on the slot. Just while solving the questions, uh, I got a, like, you know, uh, that uh, oh, these are the kind of things that we used to do back then. Okay. okay. Uh, means uh, I think difficulty level wasn't that high, but uh, the kind of uh, knowledge that we required or uh, the things we used to solve back then, that yes. was similar there uh, in the G. Yes. yes. And uh, it was uh, also you know uh, mostly focusing on the mechanics side of things. As I said, wheel, spring, or motion, that kind of thing. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so it makes sense that since you are not aware of uh, these type of questions, like what was going to come in the test, so obviously you could not prepare for it. And there was no preparation strategy. Whatever you, re you remembered from your uh, uh, class 12th or your day to day experience, you applied those skills to solve the questions. Yeah. So I think this will this will give people an idea like you need to focus on mechanics and all these things like spring connection and all these things while appearing for sedimac so these things will definitely help them so uh yeah so now we have talked about the test we have also talked about the slavers uh rough slavers we have covered so i guess these things will definitely be helpful for the students setting for upcoming placements and uh Yes, Gaurang. Gaurang, so now we can talk a bit about, you know, uh, your uh, resume. And given that you did your BTEC in electrical engineering and then you joined masters uh, uh, at IIT Bombay. So, like, how did you shape your resume or anything specific that you did for resume? Maybe we can discuss a bit about it. Oh, uh, specific. No, I think uh, the, uh, we have very good uh, format at our IIT Bombay. The list of things that needs to be put, the projects uh, and uh, relevant things. So uh, one thing we shape our resumes are according to the job that we are going for. So I was looking uh, job in building core industry. So related to like renewables, either renewable industry or electric vehicles industry. That was uh, uh, my target to get a job in. So uh, I put all the projects and uh, the courses that I had and then the positions of responsibility. So, uh, yeah, uh, means uh, if you want to get a job in code with the technical work that you have done should be highlighted. So I did that only. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think these, th these are very basic things. Uh, like you mentioned that depending on the profile, you should shape your resume. And that is a very key thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Gaurang, so we can talk a bit about uh, this MTP thing also because uh, master student at IIT Bombay, they spent more or less one year during their MTP. And uh, we also uh, somehow feel that MTP also helps in the placements. So in your case, did your MTP help you in your placements? Yes, it did very actually. So my MTP topic is, as you said, battery management system. So it is a very hot topic in industry as well. So a lot of things, uh, even the Sedemac has one uh, product, has one of its product for battery management system. And uh, I was uh, asked this uh, about my MTP in every interview. Okay, so um, because uh, if it is core, uh, anyway, uh, whatever may be the interview, if it is your, you know, MTech project, it is a big deal. So yeah. anyway, you are going to get questions on that. Uh, but uh, since it was also aligning with their uh, companies, 
uh, needs so they also interrogated it in much detail yes. so it uh, definitely helped me a lot yes yeah, so that way we can conclude, or at least we should uh, uh, means select MTP in a very good manner. Where like uh, you, because your MTP will be uh, means you will be uh, getting questions on your MTP. So I think you should choose your MTP very very wisely. Yes, yeah. So so I guess now we have also covered about your uh, MTP, and uh, we have also discussed about various aspects of uh, you know your profile and your transition test everything we have discussed so uh then Gaurang, i think we have covered the things which happened uh, you know before the interview part uh, 